and his Geary is moving up. He's leading the FTX the Crypto Cup uh, premium, premium, and uh, I'm sure he will reach uh, at least the semifinals or something like that. Uh, Anis Giri is uh, the hottest player at the moment, winning a lot of tournaments, winning whatever he sees, at the, it seems. And, uh, and he, is, he is a very uh, strong player who has lost his uh, sort of fear. It's like uh, uh, some sort of a Yoda uh, thing that, uh, or the only thing to fear is 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 fear, <laughs> or fear itself, as uh, Roosevelt said. Anyway, uh, I think uh, Geary uh, will be uh, a 2800 player and will be a serious threat to Magnus Carlsen if he can keep this up, because at the moment uh, he's really uh, doing well in all the tournaments he's playing. And one other thing, and that's what something Jan Gustafsson said on Chess24, is uh, it's uh, underappreciated how good a patsa killer uh, Anis uh, really is. And uh, what's a patsa killer? Well, a patsa killer is one that beats all the weak players. Okay, in the FTX Crypto Cup, this is actually the strongest tournament of the year. So there are no weak players, but of course, some are weaker than others. And um, Alan Pichot from uh, Argentina is, uh, of course, a much stronger player than me, but he's still a patser in this field. And in a lot of other tournaments, he would be the huge favorite. Uh, but here he's uh, the patser. And beating the tail is often uh, the key to winning tournaments. Just put that machine on against the, the tail uh, and smother them to smithereens uh, because... That's what you need. Beating, uh, uh, beating like Carlson and Nepomniachtchi, and uh, it's of course very nice, uh, but it's easier to beat Pichot, and uh, the pound point counts for the same. So beat Pichot, make a draw with Carlson, makes sense anyway. Okay, we're gonna see him uh, win against the uh, Pichot here with the black pieces, and I listen to the the critics and say, okay, we are black in this game, so we are following black. Even though you should, as a chess player, you should be objective. The objective, it's, uh, it doesn't matter if you're black or white, you should just always see it from white's perspective or something. Okay, so how do uh, Giri approach this? Oops, there it comes, e5. The Kalashnikov. It's not a great opening, but I'm seeing uh, he's uh, rule number one when playing against, uh, well, Patsas or uh, very strong Grandmasters, who's just not as strong as him. Um, it's, it's more all apologies to Alan, uh, who's uh, probably, uh, <laughs> probably not watching this, uh, is confuse them. And uh, by confuse them, make sure that it's not the main lines that they know very well they are playing. Uh, when People make mistakes when they're in uncharted territory, so bring them out into the deep forest. Don't let them uh, sit in their comfort zone. Get them out there. So here comes G6. See, that's that's what we're talking about. This looks very, very pro provocative, and that's, of course, the point uh, of, uh, of, of Geary's uh, choice of opening. Okay. Uh, this is already a serious threat here, 95. So we better get, kick that, kick that knight. Uh, but okay, the good thing is uh, Black's got a, a weak pawn here and a weak square here. Uh, okay, we'll make that another color. Um, but apart from that, he's, he's probably okay, and he, he can be happy that this knight is uh, stupid on a3. Um, so we get to get the bishop to g7. It might uh, later be a strong bishop, and the knight comes back as well. Knight out. All very natural moves here. Nothing uh, really serious. Rook c8, getting ready to um, to maybe do something on a c file. Um, Black has two main plans: uh, attack here or play f5. There is also another plan that is to try and exploit this square. White uh, is basically just better. He's simply, his position is just better. And uh, there is a nice pawn here. And if he can just uh, avoid uh, black getting too dynamic, uh, he will have a great position. Uh, so um, I think, uh, of course, white has a clear advantage here. Uh, F3 makes sense, uh, covering the pawn, but Geary instantly uh, jumps at the opportunity. There is uh, there's, there's some, some tricks here. And, uh, and this is a, bit, a little bit annoying for, for white. Uh, something like this does not help, 
because uh, it just comes in here and there's also a check here and this one is hanging and then suddenly this dragon-like bishop will be a monster so you don't want to take on f4 uh, and also white may black might even take on on e2 and attack uh, here so uh, knight d5 makes a lot of sense okay let's see what's going on and black takes and this is anti-positional this is not what we like uh, this was the good bishop uh, unless this one awakens but of course Giri had a plan and uh, and Alan is probably still on auto mode here uh, it is uh, a fast time control and, uh, and he took with the queen because he's still thinking I got this nice square here and I got this pawn here and I'm controlling the position but it's a huge mistake uh, if he takes here uh, white is, is just clearly better than the king's indian structure without the white squared bishop black will have problems uh, developing a serious attack on the king side and, and white is, is having a fun on the c file and so on so this is simply just better for white uh, probably black would have to, uh, to, to sacrifice a pawn here uh, and for inadequate compensation but Alan was confused and he played here and now it's almost all over because Geary had planned a little trap doof and suddenly uh, all the dynamics is on black side uh, the big problem for white is this queen can run into a lot of trouble to knight f4 hitting this one and oops i'll make it red and this one and maybe even attacking here um, and at the moment uh, there's something attacked uh, he can't take we see it instantly instantly something like this it's just total disaster you lose two pieces for the so <laughs> it's it's really bad so uh, okay but what then and then comes another problem uh, the knight is hanging on c2 and um, and black tries to to do something but now his queen is in trouble he still can't take because of knight uh, f4 losing two pieces okay and we see this move and this is and i'm sure giri had this all uh, under control uh, at the moment he's actually threatening something which is this move and uh, white can resign he's also trading h6 and knight somewhere winning the queen so white took and rook c5 attacking the queen and it's all over for white he uh, of course battled on this was the first game trying to uh, to to get something going but well there is this pawn is it dangerous no it's not dangerous attacking um the, the bishop and you can always uh, just well let it go and, and 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 play with two pieces because they will be very very strong against black's uh, white's king uh, instead he played like this and took this one and uh, unfortunately that that pawn is not uh, that's that's not coming anywhere uh, it's not it's not going to to do something uh, White's main problem is uh, black is probably threatening something like uh, like this and uh, and mating on on h2 here. He played this. The the threat is serious here. Rook and pawn comes open up for the bishop. It's all hanging together for white. And yeah, you can. Uh, say okay and of course Blight should just resign here and cover the pawn and white resigned uh, there will be no counterplay so this is uh, Anis Giri and you should notice his score against uh, the tail he's just beating them and uh, I predict um, that uh, it also seems his technique has improved a lot so he's got more courageous, he's got more dangerous, and he's got better technique. So watch out for Anis Giris. We're rooting for you, Anis. And this was GM Talks. Thank you for watching.